tutorial, we're going to see how to set up Assimilate Scratch for the first time. I'm using version 9.2. Before setting up your project, it's a good idea to, to generate two different folders. One with your camera masters. In this case, I have this on my 70, 70 terabyte external RAID. And a secondary Scratch render RAID. In this case, I have an internal SSD RAID where I've created a folder called Ditwit Scratch. Inside there, I've created a folder for my export for dailies, for reference grabs for the director of photography, and any other folders you may want. Open Assimilate Scratch 9.2. The first thing I want to do is create a new project. Click on New. I'll call this project Ditwit. You want to define where Assimilate Scratch is looking for the camera masters. So in the media dialog, Click Set, select your ex uh, export RAID, Ditwit Masters, and we'll hit Select. For your renderer directory, use your internal RAID. If you don't have one, use your external RAID. Dailies. For caching, I usually just set this to my internal RAID. Next, you want to make sure that your output format matches the deliverables that you want to output. In this case, we're shooting uh, Arri Alexa, Arri Raw, Anamorphic in the open gate mode, but we want to export to an HD with 2398 time base. I want to predefine my color space to be Rex 09 and an EOTF of Gamma 2.4. Click OK. Next, we want to make sure that our system settings that we have configured our SDI output card if you're using a, either a Blackmagic or an Azure Capture card. Click Configure. Select your Capture card in the drop-down menu. Click Enable. Scroll down until you see your specific uh, uh, HD resolution. In this case, we're, we're selecting 1080p 2398. And make sure that the output channel is enabled. If you have multiple output channels, you can select now which output you want to use. You also want to make sure that your output is set to the correct color output. In this case, we're using YUV 10-bit 422 with a video range. Apply these settings if, the, if this is active. Next, we want to make sure that our uh, tape IDs are set for AVID. Click on Advanced. In the search dialog, type Real. Update clip real ID. Mine is already turned on, but this will typically be turned off in the current versions of Assimilate. Turn this on. Click OK. The last thing you want to do is select user settings and make sure that your output for your frame grabs is set to your output scratch folder. And that's it you're ready to open the project. When you first open up the project, the Import Clips button will glow blue. Click on it. Navigate, uh, you can see that uh, Simulate Scratch already navigates directly to the Ditwit Master Output folder. We're gonna select on our Alexa uh, Camera Masters. In this case, we're gonna bring in a roll 8. If you wanna uh, only bring in a specific type of file format, in this case, Dot ARI, you can either set this here or leave it to all. One thing that's good to do to bring in footage in for the first time is to use Create New Timeline. Open. In this case, I want the footage to be brought into my current group, which can see, be seen here on my construct. And I want to create a new, uh, new folder name using the clip name. Because I'm going to manually bring audio in, because it's not in the same folder, I'll leave this turned off. But I do want to apply a LUT. I've already predefined my LUT folder, and I'm using the 5219 cube. Click OK. This brings the footage in, but you'll notice in the thumbnails that it looks rather crunchy and saturated. The reason for this is the footage is brought in uh, expecting it to be uh, previewed as log C with a uh, original camera uh, color space. 
you want to Command A to select all the clips, Media Browser, go to Grade, and you want to change your col your color space in EOTF to X09 because that's what we're going to be grading in, and Gamma 2.4. This is also because the LUT that we already have predefined, which is the 5219 LUT, is already converting log C into X09. If you're not using a LUT, you could leave this back in the original uh, uh, Alexa wide gamut with log C. That way, Scratch will automatically convert this to be the correct linear output. The other thing you can check in base is that your real ID names have automatically been populated using, that, using the preference setting that we already set. If this hasn't been done, for example, if I clicked on real ID, I can type in hashtag sname to generate uh, the uh, real name token, which will basically take the file name here and place it into this column. The real ID is also called tape ID for Avid users. OK. So now I can go into uh, color effects, and I can see that my viewer right now, which is a HD monitor, is basically seeing the image zoomed in. So I'm just going to zoom out the viewer a bit, and you'll notice that it hasn't cropped the image to frame to my HD frame. So I can use the framing controls. If I select width, because this is anamorphic footage and it was recorded in open gate, it's going to be wider than my 239 aspect ratio. I've pre-configured a scaling ratio of 37% to get me to my 239 aspect ratio. You'll need a rack layer to do this. To select this to all my clips, select all and apply. This transformation is now in all my clips. So now that I have the footage in, the next thing I want to do is bring my audio in. Go back to Construct, select All, Media Browser, go to your Audio tab, and select Fine Audio. Again, Assimilate Scratch automatically takes me to my external RAID to my Ditwit Masters folder. And in this case, I've created a folder called Sound Masters, and I'm going to navigate to the original Sound Masters. Using timecode, it's automatically linked up to the clips. The other thing you'll notice is in the base tab, that it's also acquired scene and take information from the audio. If you go back into the color effects tab and make sure that your speaker is turned on so you can hear the audio, go up to audio, go to output, and make sure that you have SDI embedded audio activated. If you plug your headphones into your external reference monitor, you'll be able to hear the audio in sync on that external monitor. If you go to Mixer and play the clip, you'll see all the tracks that are currently active. In this case, the sound mixer cho chose to record six channels. If you want to confirm this, you can go to the Edit tab, Audio, and pull the timeline up. You can see here that the audio recorder did indeed use only six channels. To make sure that the audio is synced correctly, scrub to the beginning of a, uh, uh, of a take and look for the slate. Step forward until you see the clip, the uh, slate clip. See where the sticks close. You want to make sure that the waveform matches here. This is already being done automatically by Simulate Scratch. However, if the time code or if the sound is out a little bit, let's say here, you can merely just pull the clip and slip it over until it matches. And you can do this for each clip. In this case, this one's out about a third to a half frame. In this case, I adjusted it by minus 9.2 milliseconds. You can now grade your footage. Let's say I'm happy with that grade. I can copy it, go back to the start of my timeline, hit paste, and paste forward. Of course, you'll want to go in and grade each individual clip to your specific needs. Now let's go to the Render tab. 
what we want to do is we want to output this original array raw file to a ProRes file. I'm going to go to add node, ProRes encoder, select in the node, hit the format settings, and I'm going to export this as an Apple ProRes 42 LTE file. I have six channels of audio. I'm going to activate these. I'm going to output a multi-track. I'll do 16-bit. And I'm going to define a specific path and name for the files. In this case, because we want to match the original camera master files, we're going to use the SName token. You can also do this by using the drop down menu. When I hit render, each clip is going to have its own clip with the original file name. If you want to put this into a container, you can simply go hashtag SName the backslash that creates a folder right now it will create a new folder for every clip but I only want it to change any time the rule changes so I'm going to use the bracket buttons and generate a 0 comma 4 this starts at 0 uh, characters and goes to 4 characters so in this case I'm using a 8 and anytime any of these values change it will create a new folder so in this case all my clips from a camera are going to generate in a folder called A008. You hit OK. You can double check that your output matches your original files by hitting play on the output node. And you can go back and forth between your camera master node and your output node. And you can see that the framing and color correction match. Go back to render, click on the output node, and render node. If you go to render queue, you can see the footage rendering here. While this is rendering in the background, you can go back to your construct and you can input your next role. When it's done, you can check the render queue and see that your output is done. Navigate to your scratch. In dailies, you'll see the folder that we created, in this case, A008, and inside, all the clip names that match the original file names. To be sure that they exported correctly, Go back to Assimilate Scratch, go to the beginning of your construct, click on the first clip, Import Clips. In this case, we want to turn off the Create New Timeline. We want to navigate to our Render RAID, Ditwit, Dailies, A008. And to be sure that they ex we exported a uh, .mov file sequence, we want to make sure that we select this as a filter. In this case, the footage is going to be transcoded and converted to sRGB. So make sure that Rex09 is flagged. Click Open. Click No, because it's asking us to change the file output. We do not want to do this. And now if we hit Color Effects, we can go to any specific part of the frame and look at our ProRes file. And if nothing changes here, you successfully outputted the same aspect ratio and color space. Again, back to construct, you can also see that the frame count matches per clip and that I've exported the same amount of clips. This means this files and this file will match exactly in editorial. That's a quick tutorial on how to use Assimilate Scratch for onset dailies.